Hi everyone! Now today's decoration are some dried fruit ornaments. I've actually made these every year for a few years now. The main idea behind today's decoration and honestly this whole 12 days of Christmas series that I've been doing is due to a trip I recently made to Lincoln. Now I went to uni in Lincoln and it was an amazing couple of years just studying architecture and a big highlight with my nostalgia goggles clearly on was the Christmas fair that they do every year and because Lincoln is one of the oldest cities in the UK the area of Steep Hill is just it's really hard to describe so as the name suggests I guess it's a really steep hill died either side uh, all these tiny little shops if you've never been there think Diagon Alley that's kind of the closest thing I can really describe it to they're all just these weird little shops with just odd items that you can only find there there'd be artists there there's weird crafts there's odd bookstores there's little tea rooms they're just it's a really interesting little street just all year round but when it comes to Christmas fair they'll decorate up all the windows and they spread all of this stuff out into the street it's just it's just this amazing like feeling of being in this weird market they even all dress up it's crazy they all wear these old outfits <laughs> and robes and stuff <laughs> it's just it looks great and I don't know it just it just all adds to it I guess and it just the market spreads all the way up Steep Hill, goes up to the cathedral and goes all the way through the castle. You can walk through the castle and it just it just takes up the whole of that part of the city and it just yeah it's just amazing. <laughs> and every year at this Christmas fair there's a stall where they have these dried fruit ornaments and they make the tiny ones that I'm gonna make today but they also make these long chains of it and reefs and they even make this giant stag <laughs> made out of dried fruit and it all smells amazing you can smell it from halfway across the Christmas fair it's so strong and it's just oh, it's just Christmas in the smell <laughs> so the first time I saw these were more than seven years ago now and I thought they were just brilliant and I got a few and I would get them while I was there but when I left Lincoln there was just nothing like it there was <laughs> I couldn't get them anywhere else at Christmas so I decided to start making them myself so that's what I want to show you today now as you can see I just picked out some random citrus fruits and you can choose any citrus fruit that you can get your hands on really this year I picked some pink grapefruit and oranges and limes and I cut them all into slices of roughly the same thickness. I also took the lime, tried to create a bit of a lime bauble. The way you do that is you cut into the diameter of the lime in the same way that you would if you were cutting it into wedges, but you don't go all the way through. But to be honest, even though I really like the look of the limes, they do take a good hour or more to dry out than any of the slices so <laughs> keep that in mind in how much you want these I'm more wanting to show you in the video how you would do it now I arranged them all onto one sheet and you don't have to worry about too much space between I'm pretty sure you could overlap them I don't think it'd be the end of the world and then put them into your preheated oven now the best thing you can do is have it at its lowest setting which on mine is about 75 degrees I went for 100 degrees <laughs> and that's because I'm not made of electricity and my last bill was painful <laughs> so I decided to go for a slightly higher temperature and just check it a little bit more regularly. Now at 100 degrees it took me around three hours to fully dry out these slices and every 45 minutes or so I would go and check it and then flip them over. If you do it properly at 75 degrees it's going to take you at a minimum four hours to dry out and like I said your lime is going to take a good hour on top of that as well because there's so much liquid in it. If you want to speed up your drying process as well, when you go to flip them over you'll notice there's going to be a lot of water on your tray. If you want to dab that up with some kitchen towel it's going to probably speed up your drying just a little bit. Now I got mine a little bit crispy. <laughs> That's the trouble with going at a higher temperature but they still smell good so I'm happy. And now you just leave them to cool for an hour or so just so they that gives them this kind of glossy look and then take your dried fruit and start creating some ornaments. I've often seen people use twine to lace these all together and it looks really good um, but I don't have any so <laughs> I went with this plasticky red ribbon that I have and I thought plastic would work quite well with the fruit. I also took these wooden beads that I had and I used those to lace the ribbon around to create a bit of a stopper underneath the ornament. You don't really need this you can just tie a knot it's just more I had wooden beads and I thought I'd use them. <laughs> 
I also like using the wooden beads to space out the fruit a bit because I like to see each slice but again you can just stack them and it works just as nicely. And then you just start threading the fruit slices onto your ribbon. There's no right or wrong way of this, it's just however you want to do it. The only real rule of thumb I guess would be try and make the hole through that fruit slice in the centre pith of your citrus fruit. Try and go for that white area because that's going to be the strongest part of your fruit and it also it will obviously and that's going to be the strongest part of your fruit so it won't fall off or slide either side through the much softer area of the fruit. Now I guess you could have done this before <laughs> you put them in the oven and that's probably true for my lime bauble too and it's probably going to make that dry faster but as you know I do like to make this a little bit more difficult for myself so I didn't think of that until I started recording this voiceover. <laughs> Now, like I said, it's all up to you. Mix and match your fruit however you like them. And as you can see, if you have a cat, expect it to come and start stealing the ribbon as you're doing this. Now, what I love about these ornaments is they release these like whiffs of citrus into your room just randomly. You can be sitting there watching your DIY YouTube videos and suddenly you get this waft of fruit and it's just really cool. I just, I really love that smell. Also, if you want that smell to be stronger and just kind of similar to when it first comes out of the oven, if you take a water spray bottle and you give the ornament a few spritz, it's going to release all of that smell back into your room. Now, if you get these right, they could last you multiple Christmases. But if you are like me, you want to make them every year <laughs> so that your house just stinks of citrus fruit. <laughs> It's getting to that point where this signifies the beginning of Christmas for me, making these ornaments. And if you do make these, I'd really love to see what you create and how you arrange your fruit and what fruit you use. So if you do, send me a comment or tag me on Instagram so I can live vicariously through you. <laughs> I really hope you're all doing well and see you again tomorrow.